Our health and social care system is under unprecedented stress. Demand has never been higher. 10% of the population is on a waiting list of some sort. Yet the public conversation about health, money and priorities is woefully inadequate. And I would just like to ask the doctor, where exactly does the extra billions that the government is spending and has spent since um, Brexit, where is that money actually going? I'm a health economist, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't have a good answer in terms of where all that money is going. All I know is that I see patients coming in on a daily basis and I'm having to tell them that I can't help them. It's in some ways the debate is too simplistic and too polarised. I mean, an example of that is, is the discussion about funding. It's, oh, should we have more funding or less funding for the NHS? But that seems to me the, completely the wrong debate to be having. The debate should be, where is money best spent? I think we're in this early phase of this explosion of information, and clearly it's a dark side or a, or a dark period, right? Because I think people are having a very hard time adjusting to this explosion of information, and this, it, it's very difficult for people to sort of tease out what is, uh, what is uh, rigorous, uh, correct, and what is clearly misleading and false. Well, I think we're at a pivotal moment after COVID that there were many, there, there was this moment in history that I, uh, we won't experience very often, once every hundred years, at least in, in most recent history. So it's really an important time and we're at a crossroads where the NHS is really facing a lot of problems in relation to staffing, in relation to waiting lists, in relation to efficiency. I'm Adam Wishart, a multi-award winning filmmaker, and I was delighted when Professor Philip Clark asked me to be part of this project because there's never been greater urgency for the public to understand the trade-offs that we as a nation make for our spending for health and social care. Eric Rutherford is dying of a cancer called myeloma. I've seen what these choices mean for the public over the course of my career. Plasma of the blood. So I've told stories about health and economics, high-cost cancer drugs. This is an intensive care ward for newborns treating 23-week babies. Right across Britain, patients are anxious to see their doctor. He's got bronchiolitis again, a viral infection, and swollen tonsils. Skyrocketing demand of general practice and inequality. I felt a pain in my left boob, and I think there's a lump there. But for me, it's always essential to base the journalism on the data derived in the academy. OK, because we're fully booked at the moment. So I think what's really cool about Philip's initiative in the centre of mixing both serious scientists with serious media people is that I think it really will address that challenge, which I think is really important. The role of academics has got to be to try to frame the questions in a way that people can then think, oh, actually, that's the way I should be thinking about it. And that's got to be partly through a discussion with the public and engaging with the public. If we're trying to frame those questions, but it's just for ourselves, then it's not got any value, not going to have any impact. The public is really key to policy change, and I think that's often forgotten in, in many aspects, so when, when policies are being made as well. So I think the first important thing is people have to understand the numbers and the evidence that are given, that's given to them. How can we communicate messages which are complex, have nuance, are based on the statistics of large populations? We journalists and filmmakers sometimes struggle to connect these with our audiences. And that's why it's necessary that this centre engages both with storytellers, from YouTube influencers to broadsheet columnists, to help them explain the world better, but also with our academic community to help them reach a broader public. In a perfect world, uh, voters, citizens, would have a really good understanding of how um, evidence-based policy information is generated and the implication it has for their day-to-day -day life. If I give you one kind of concrete example of this, one of the things which I, I look at is how effective is disability insurance. If you look in the popular press and the popular discussion, the overwhelming discussion points are about people who, who shouldn't be getting it, but they do get it. If you like, the people who should have been rejected but aren't rejected. The kind of scrounger sort of discussion. If you actually look in the data, that's not the problem. 
The problem is there's too many people who should be getting it are being turned down. We're scientists. We're looking for the truth. It doesn't, if our hypothesis is overturned, that's not a problem for us. <laughs> it's vital that this new center will not only gather data, but work out ways to communicate it. And hopefully that'll create space for policymakers and politicians to make better decisions that will critically affect all of our lives.